This conference will now be recorded. Fine. So we started with the basics of fermentation regarding the fermenter design, everything I hope you all remember. Then we uh, started studying about the fermentation of micro and macro molecules. We started with uh, pharmaceuticals. In the last class, we completed pharmaceuticals. Fine. So today we are going to deal with microbial fermentation of organic acids. Find how organic acids are produced. So first of all, what are organic acids? So we know examples of organic acids already it is given there. Acetic acid, gluconic acid, citric acid, itaconic acid, gibberellic acid and lactic acid. Some of these acids you have heard might be. Uh, can anybody tell me what is the source of citric acid naturally? Naturally where citric acid is found? Anybody? What is the natural source of citric acid? Yes, very good lemon, oranges, uh, such fruit, citrus fruits. Very good, exactly. The term is exact, Anaka, good. So citrus fruits are the natural source of citric acid, fine. But uh, when we need any of these organic acids in large quantity, we have to go for fermentation because if you want to get a lot and lot of citric acids, then it is possible only to buy lot and lot of lemon and separate it and all those things are very tedious. So instead of that, we can go for fermentation. Now, similarly, anything you know about uh, acetic acid, formic acid and acetic acid, I think it's CHO and CH3CHO, something like that is its uh, chemical composition. I, uh, I don't remember. Regarding acetic acid, Fine, okay, leave it. What about lactic acid? That you will be knowing. What about the, uh, the how lactic acid is produced in a, there is a reaction by which lactic acid is produced in milk. Have you, have you studied about that lactic acid? What is milk sugar? Milk sugar, name of milk sugar, anybody? Anybody from the participants, what is the name of milk sugar? Lactose, very good, Mavinia. So lactose is uh, milk sugar. Now what is happening? Ferment, ferment, if, if there is, if there are microorganisms present in milk, they can convert lactose into lactic acid. So what happens? If, if lactose in a milk is converted into lactic acid, what is going to happen for the milk? Anybody? Basic, basic question. Even it's actually from that topic food microbiology. Most of this is, is related to food microbiology as well. Lactose is converted into lactic acid means what is happening to the milk? Milk will be converted into yeah fermentation. That's what. What is the product? Final product. If lactose is present, yeah, curd. Very good. That's what I was asking. Curd. Curdling. Curdling of milk happens. Very good. So you know. So all the all those are examples for organic acids which are naturally present. Fine in fruits, maybe in some of the food products like milk. Fine. Now, the, uh, apart from this organic acid, various amino acids, for example, lysine and glutamic acid, all these things can be produced by microbial fermentation. So, microbial, if, if we want to produce any product, any of these organic acids or any of this amino acid in a large quantity for any industrial purposes, we have to rely upon microbial fermentation. Fine. Now, living beings require various amino acids in diet, we all know. Uh, essential and non-essential amino acids you might have studied in biochemistry fine now lysine for example lysine is produced by microbial fermentation then uh, methionine is produced synthetically are used as animal feed supplements so there are lot of uses and also as additives in cereals lot of um, applications are there for this uh, amino acids as well for example lysine and methionine is used as animal feed supplement and as additives in cereals. Uh, if I, I have to give you an example, uh, you know this uh, wheat powder. Wheat powder is uh, fortified atta. Have you heard about the term fortified atta? Anybody? If if we buy if we buy atta, if we buy wheat powder from uh, uh, from a shop, you can see on the labeling fortified atta. What do you mean by fortified atta? fortified atta which means no it's not fermented actually this uh, wheat powder or the atta is provided with some some additional supplements that's what fortification 
uh, if I have to give you an example, uh, what they are adding, fortified with iron and folic acid, sometimes you can see. Whenever you buy something like this, you just check the label. So you will get some information from the label uh, regarding the nutrient labeling, what all things are there in the ATA and what is it fortified. Fortified with iron, fortified with uh, folic acid, like that you can see. Yeah, it's enrichment. We are providing some additional components, some additional nutritional factors for which is positive for our human health. Fine. So similarly, we can use all these things as additives in cereals. Fine. Now, now glutamic acid is used as MSG. So this is an important term, MSG, and ingredient in food industry such as soups. So anybody know the full form of MSG? MSG. Anybody know the full form of MSG? Anyone? It's very easy. This is a trade name of glutamic acid, actually. Glutamic acid is, uh, we, can, we can buy glutamic acid in market as MSG. It's an artificial sweetener. We are using it in soups and many other, uh, yeah, very good, excellent, Anaka. Monosodium glutamate, MSG, monosodium glutamate. Fine. So that is also there. Fine. Then the microbial production of, um, in, no, in microbial production of amino acids, the desired L isomer is formed, whereas chemical synthesis produce a resmic mixture, which require costly separation procedures to remove the biologically inactive D isomer half of the mixture. So, what is the difference between chemical synthesis or chemical production of amino acids and microbial production of amino acids? If we go for chemical production of amino acids, the amino acids are produced as a mixture which consists of two types of forms, which is L-isomer and D-isomer. L-isomer is nothing but levo-isomer and D-isomer is dextro-isomer. That is only in chemical. If we are going for any chemical synthesis of amino acids, we will be getting the particular amino acid. Say, for example, lysine. If we are going to produce lysine, we are getting a mixture of L-lysine and D-lysine. Now, what is the issue in that? Now, the D-lysine or the D-isomer of any amino acid is biologically inactive, fine, whereas only L-isomer is biologically active. So, whatever purpose we need for the amino acid, if we go for chemical synthesis, only one portion, maybe, only one portion will be active, whereas the other portion is inactive. Whereas, if we are going for microbial production of amino acid, it always produces it as biologically active L isomer. So that is one positive thing when we compare chemical synthesis of amino acid with microbial fermentation. Fine. So in that case, and in case of chemical synthesis, then we have to separate the biologically inactive D isomer from biologically active L isomer, which is again a tedious process, again a time consuming and uh, uh, we will have some uh, additional economic loss. So in order to avoid all these uh, hurdles, we can directly go for microbial fermentation of amino acids, which will provide amino acids in the bio biologically active L isomer form. Fine. So you might have studied about all those things in, uh, it, it depends upon the rotation, orientation of the uh, structure. You might have studied in uh, biochemistry, uh, dextro and levo rotation and all those things. Just refer the biochemistry topic, you will get more idea about that. Fine? Now, so yes, Vidushi, thank you. So that is about the, the that is that is what when we compare uh, microbial fermentation of amino acid with chemical synthesis, this is the main factor. Now, there is some problem for microbial synthesis as well. Now, the major problem in microbial fermentation is to overcome the natural microbial regulatory mechanism, the natural microbial regulatory mechanism, which limit the amount of amino acid produced and released from the cell. So this is one hurdle in uh, microbial fermentation. So if we are going for microbial fermentation of amino acid, well and good. Whatever amino acid we are getting is in the biologically active L isomer form. So one hurdle is over. Another problem is, but we have to make sure we are getting amino acid in the proper concentration and proper amount because we must make sure that the microbial cell which is producing the amino acid must 
secrete it into the external environment we have to make sure that the cell wall is so naturally naturally how the uh, transport of uh, material takes place in a microbial cell it is a semi permeable membrane it all depends upon you might have studied in all uh, microbial mechanism for transport of materials inside and outside the cell so usually amino acids are produced in the microbial cell it must be secreted outside then only we can separate it from the fermentation medium and use it for our commercial purposes so that is one hurdle in microbial fermentation we have to make sure we overcome all microbial mechanism regarding this uh, transport of nutrients outside the cell so that whatever quantity of amino acid is produced by the microorganism is secreted outside the cell or released from the cell so that we can separate it so we can separate the product from the fermentation medium and we can use it commercially so this is one hurdle in microbial fermentation so there are few mechanisms we are treating microbial cells with a uh, few uh, chemical substances even few antibiotics to make it more permeable so that amino acids are secreted outside the cell all those things we will be learning in the coming slide okay so this is one hurdle fine now commercial processes successfully overcome this restriction already and even genetically engineered strains are employed in future so uh, the application of genetic engineering is also taking place is also happening in the production of organic acids and even amino acids clear that's an introduction about the production of organic acid so this is as usual already i have given you a lot of charts in the last uh, few presentations here also you have got one chart this chart almost covers the organic acid produced by fermentation see you have acetic acid here lactic acid then fumaric acid and gluconic acid and the causative organism which is the culture acetobacter lactobacillus delbrueckii rhizopus aspergillus niger then what is the medium here for acetic acid we are using ethanol 98 to 99% here lactobacillus in situ is a milk based enzyme we are going for milk whey molasses plain sugar for fumaric acid we are using glucose for gluconic acid we are using glucose and corn starch liquor and these are the fermentation uh, conditions whether we are going for, whether we are going for continuous aeration now what is the composition of a fermentation medium fine so just refer to such uh, chart so that you will get lot of answers for your multiple choice questions clear yeah this is from one uh, textbook actually textbook of microbiology by atlas so that textbook covers most of these topics in a very good form so that's why i referred all those textbooks and uh, copied all these charts for you okay so that is also over so going to the next slide we are going we are going just just few things about the uh, for me production of organic acids fine first one is lysine lysine is not uh, nothing but our uh, amino acid fine now direct production of l lysine see already i have explained from carbohydrate uses what is the organism we are using conibacterium glutamicum fine now cane molasses is the substrate we are using generally used as substrate ph is maintained near neutrality so uh, ph will be ph will be near neutral fine by adding ammonia or urea and as, as the sugar is metabolized lysine accumulates in the growth medium the organism produce about 50 g per liter of lysine in 2 to 3 days so the fermentation time is 2 to 3 days so lysine the organism is conibacterium glutamicum and all other uh, fermenter fermentation conditions all they we have explained here fine so that's about lysine and next one is glutamic acid so i am going in a comparatively fast pace because all those things already you know because we already we have studied lot of fermentation now you know what all things we have to uh go through while we are learning a fermentation we have to go for the organism uh what is the substrate used what are all the conditions that is the uh, temperature then uh, ph all those things and uh, maybe concentration that's it fine anything additional if i have to explain i will explain it or you want me to explain more you can just stop me there fine so next one is glutamic acid again produced by direct fermentation using the strains what are the organisms used brevibacterium arthrobacter and conibacterium fine now cultures of 
കോണി ബാക്ടീരിയം ഗ്ലൂട്ടാമിക്കം ആൻഡ് ബ്രീവി ബാക്ടീരിയം ഫ്ലേവർ ദീസ് ടു ആർ വൈഡ്ലി യൂസ് ഫോർ ലാർജ് സ്കെയിൽ പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് എം എസ് ജി ഓക്കെ സോ so glutamic acid as it is is produced by organisms such as bruvi bacterium arthrobacter and coni bacterium but if we are going for monosodium glutamate fine we have we are mainly relying upon the cultures of coni bacterium glutamicum and bruvi bacterium flavor now what is the uh, medium we are using process use a glucose mineral salt medium as the substrate with addition of urea as nitrogen source okay we are adding urea as the nitrogen source during fermentation now ph is maintained at 6 to 8 temperature is at 30 degrees celsius with well aeration so these are all the conditions of the fermentation now now so this is one thing so as we have mentioned earlier challenge is to make the cells secrete sufficient quantities of amino acid for commercial purpose so we have to make we have to make sure that the microbial cells will secrete sufficient quantities of amino acids so that then only we can separate it we can separate the products from the fermentation medium fine now several methods are employed for inducing leaky cell membrane that permit excretion of amino acid so what we have to make sure okay amino acids are produced inside the microbial cell if we want those amino acids to be secreted by the organism to the surrounding media we have to make sure that we need or we use few techniques or few aids by means we make the cell membrane of the microbial cell leaky leaky means you know what is leaking leaking means whatever is inside will come outside if it, if you see a leaking pipe water will be falling from that dropping dripping from that fine similarly whatever amino acid is produced by the microbial cells if we want to secrete if we want to make it secrete into the surrounding medium we have to make the cell membrane leaky so now for that what all things we are going to do that is the another thing another point so what is our method now see in case of this uh, glutamic acid one approach is to go corni bacterium glutamicum in a medium with sub optimal concentration of biotin sub optimal concentration without adequate biotin cell form membrane that are deficient in phospholipids and glutamic acid is secreted through the leaky membrane so one method one method by which we make the cell membrane of the microorganism leaky is by limiting a nutrient in the medium we are providing a sub optimal concentration of biotin now microorganisms like corni bacterium glutamicum uses biotin in order to form cell membrane which is rich in phospholipid if biotin is lacking in the medium cell membrane will be formed with less phospholipid or deficient in phospholipid that means the cell membrane will naturally become fragile or leaky so that whatever amino acid is produced by the cell is secreted to the surrounding medium so that is one method now another appro another approach is to add fatty acid or surface active agents that is detergents to disrupt the cell membrane and release glutamic acid from the cell so the same method we have seen a similar method we have seen in our uh, last class i hope some of you remember where we have seen this method using detergents to disrupt the cell membrane can anybody answer me we have seen the similar method in one of our last class using detergents to disrupt the cell membrane in which method sds yes where where we studied it shalini you are correct you are near the answer isolation of yeah very good dna isolation isolation of nucleic acid we were using the same method so one similar method we are using here also we are using some fatty acids or surface active agents such as detergents so that they will act upon the cell membrane and make it more permeable and thereby which we release glutamic acid from the cell now another way is to add penicillin antibiotic to the medium during exponential phase of growth you know what is exponential phase of growth log phase causing the bacteria to become leaky 
and release glutamic acid. So these are all the different methods. Few more methods are there. See, adjusting the pH and adding NaCl can be used to convert. Okay, this is for glutamic acid to MSG. Once glutamic acid is produced, we can adjust the pH or by adding sodium chloride in a particular concentration, this glutamic acid can be converted into MSG or monosodium glutamate, which is nothing but the trade form of glutamic acid. Clear? So there are several methods by which we can make a microbial cell membrane leaky. First one is by, uh, by limiting a nutrient in the media so that microorganisms will form cell membrane, which is fragile due to less amount of less concentration of phospholipid and thus the cell membrane becomes leaky. Another method is by adding surface active agents that is detergents or fatty acids in order to disrupt the cell membrane and release the content of the cell. Another method is by adding uh, antibiotics such as penicillin during the log phase or exponential phase of growth so that the cell membrane will become leaky and release glutamic acid. Fine. Finally, once glutamic acid is produced, is present in the medium in sufficient quantity either by adjusting the pH or by adding sodium chloride we can convert glutamic acid into our trade form that is MSG monosodium glutamate clear till here is this clear this much yes very good 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 Thank you all. So we are going to the next one that is gluconic acid. Now organism first of all produced by various bacteria including acetobacter species and several fungi including penicillium and aspergillus. So we are using bacteria such as acetobacter also fungi such as penicillin. So you can get it all in uh, multiple choice question. Uh, dash is the cause dash is the industrially used organism for the production of gluconic acid and they will give several uh, options four options so we have to just learn the uh, industrially important organism all those things just learn it by heart it and uh, make it in a presentable form fine so now how we are going for this uh, so we were we were dealing with the Gluconic acid produced by bacteria such as acetobacter and fungus may be penicillium and aspergillus. Now, how we are going for some more uh, details about the gluconic acid. Fine. Now, aspergillus neither convert glucose to gluconic acid in a single enzymatic reaction. Very good. So, glucose is converted into gluconic acid in a single step by aspergillus neither. Now, gluconic acid has various commercial uses. So, what are all the uses? First of all, calcium gluconate used as a pharmaceutical ingredient in order to supply calcium to the body okay gluconic acid has got lot of uses now one form one uh, derivative of gluconic acid is calcium gluconate which is used in a pharmaceutical which is used as a pharmaceutical product in order to supply calcium to, to treat the calcium deficiency fine now another one is ferrous gluconate so why we are using it used to supply iron in the treatment of anemia so for anemic patients we are uh, providing ferrous gluconate. So all those things are pharmaceutical applications. Then gluconic acid as such is used in dishwasher detergents in order to prevent the spotting of glass surfaces due to precipitation of calcium and magnesium salt. Okay. So uh, this gluconic acid has got a lot of uses. Various derivatives of gluconic acids are used in different industries. For example, calcium gluconate and Ferrous gluconate is used in pharmaceuticals. Calcium gluconate is used as a calcium supplement, whereas ferrous gluconate is used as an iron supplement in order to treat anemia. Also, gluconic acid is also used in dishwasher detergents, in uh, cleaning purposes. That is, it prevents the sporting of glass surface. You might have seen when we when we wash the glass in uh, glass uh, when we wash the glass with a chemical and we dry it we can see some spot on the glass it, it looks uh, uh, ugly actually sometimes so in order to prevent all those things we can use gluconic acid fine now commercial production of gluconic acid by aspergillus niger uses a submerged culture process so what is the process submerged culture means submerged culture process means uh, our substrate 
it's a fermenter in the fermenter media it is immersed in the fermenter okay in the fermenter you add media you add the organisms and the, uh, whatever reactions takes place below the medium or inside the medium that is submerged fermentation fine now the fungus initially grow to form sufficient amount of mycelium afterwards conversion of glucose to gluconic acid is mediated by fungal enzyme glucose oxidase so glucose oxidase is the enzyme which is produced by the fungus aspergillus niger which convert glucose into gluconic acid okay it's a purely an enzymatic reaction which takes place in a single step single enzymatic reaction so we are providing the substrate glucose we add the organism aspergillus niger which uh, the type of fermentation is submerged and what is happening with a single enzymatic reaction that is the enzyme glucose oxidase produced by the fungus aspergillus niger convert glucose into gluconic acid that's it now typical growth medium contain approximately 25% glucose then various salt calcium carbonate and a compound containing the element boron so these are all the components of the nutrient medium majority of glucose is there then various salts plus calcium carbonate plus boron a compound containing the element boron this is nothing this is what the fermentation media of gluconic acid fine so yes with this we are continuing so now what what, about, what is the uh, what is the peculiarity of this boron or borate borate in medium stabilizes calcium gluconate prevents its precipitation and permit the use of excess calcium carbonate to neutralize most of the gluconic acid produced and keep the ph within the acceptable limit so these are all the various functions of this uh, compound containing boron or borate what happens it stabilizes the calcium gluconate first of all prevents the precipitation of calcium gluconate now neutralize excess calcium car uh, carbonate fine then keep the ph within the acceptable limit okay now fermentation is conducted at 30 degrees celsius with proper aeration and agitation fine now cooling coils are used to regulate generated heat so here we are using cooling coils sometimes we use heating coils in order to increase the temperature required for the reaction in a fermenter already we have studied this sometimes we use cooling coils since fermentation is a uh, metabolic process fine lot of heat is generated so in order to reduce the high heat we are using cooling coils because the process is oxidative fine now growth of fungal media is limited by the concentration of nitrogen in the media okay so we have to have a proper nitrogen supply now gluconic acid is recovered from fermentation by addition of calcium hydroxide to form crystalline calcium gluconate then free gluconic acid is further recovered by the addition of acid so once uh, gluconic acid is sufficiently produced in the media we add calcium hydroxide so that this gluconic acid is converted into crystalline calcium gluconate and separated from the fermentation medium and if there is any free gluconic acid further present in the medium it can be recovered by the addition of acid clear this is the fermentation conditions used for calcium gluconate or for gluconic acid okay and we are moving on to the next one citric acid fine now citric acid is produced by cultures of aspergillus niger used in various ways such as a food additive that is the most important use of citric acid fine especially in the production of soft drinks as a metal chelating and sequestering agents also in some other industry in the manufacture of plasticizer etc so lot of uses are there for citric acid but the major use is as a food additive okay citric acid is a preservative or a food additive mainly we are used in soft drinks then pickles and many other products fine so now the composition of fermentation media is critical for higher yield essential to limit growth of fungus for accumulation of high level of product fine accomplished by having a deficiency of trace metals and phosphate in the medium now 
typical medium contains what is the medium all about molasses ammonium nitrate magnesium sulfate and potassium phosphate now as it is added to achieve a low ph so the medium consists of these components molasses ammonium nitrate magnesium sulfate and potassium phosphate and uh, all, whole, the whole fermentation process talks, takes place at low ph and we always provide a medium with deficiency in trace metals and phosphate for a higher yield in order to provide a higher yield we design the medium in such a way clear that's about the citric acid moving on to itaconic acid now so already we have studied about citric acid now the transformation of citric acid by aspergillus cereus used for the production of itaconic acid so aspergillus niger produces citric acid now the citric acid is converted into itaconic acid by another fungus that is aspergillus cereus used as a resin in detergents it is used in detergent industry now fermentation process uses a well aerated molasses mineral salt medium so what is the media we are using well aerated molasses mineral salt medium at a very low ph below 2.2 fine now what why we are what what is happening at higher ph at a higher ph this fungus aspergillus cereus degrades itaconic acid that's why we always keep the ph low so that degradation of itaconic acid must never takes place now the iron concentration is limited to achieve acceptable product yield so in the in the in the production of uh, citric acid we were limiting trace metals and phosphate for a higher yield here we are limiting iron concentration for a higher yield okay now the development of fungal mycelia is limited using a low inoculum to obtain high product yield okay the mycelia the mycelia growth is also limited here if if we have a uh, high mycelia growth we will have a less product recovery so that in case of itaconic acid production we are limiting the mycelia formation of aspergillus cereus fine now once itaconic acid is produced recovery is by evaporation of the fermentation medium to crystallize itaconic acid we evaporate the fermentation medium so that itaconic acid is crystallized then we can separate it clear that's about citric acid itaconic acid fine we are moving next one is yes thank you vidushi next one is gibberellic acid so what about gibberellic acid is produced by the fungus gibberella fusicuroi fugic, fine now otherwise it is also known as fusarium monilifo fine produce commercially using see here also it is aerated submerged culture fine now what is the media glucose mineral salt medium incubation temperature approximately 25 degrees celsius slightly acidic conditions that is the ph fine process normally takes two to three days and gibberellic acid and related gibberellins are plant hormones so they are mainly used as plant hormones extensively used as growth promoting substances for plant growth so gibberellins auxin gibberellins cytokinins all those things are plant growth promoting substances so here we are producing gibberellic acid and related gibberellins which is a well known plant growth promoting factor and it also aids in flowering then seed germination okay flowering then seed germination then also to induce the formation of seedless fruit it also helps in the formation of seedless fruit in certain plants also it enhances overall agriculture productivity so these are all the functions of gibberellic acid as a well known plant growth promoting factor fine we are moving on to the next one lactic acid now the organism this is important lactobacillus delbrueckii widely used for the commercial production of lactic acid various other bacteria such as lactobacillus genus then also from the genus streptococcus leuconostoc also have industrial importance it is used in food as a preservative that is the most important thing lactic acid also in leather production for deliming of hides it is used in food as a preservative it is also used in leather industry for deliming of hides also in textile industry for fabric treatment so 
lactic acid is used in various industries such as food industry le leather industry in textile industry in food industry it is used as a well known preservative in leather industry for the deliming of hides it's a process during the formation of leather fine and also in textile industry for fabric treatment fine so we are again moving on now some additional things about uh, like lactic acid now various forms of lactic acids are used for various other purposes for example used as resin used in resins as polylactic acid used in plastic as various derivatives in electroplating as copper lactate fine in baking powder and animal feed supplement as calcium lactate so various industries we are using various derivatives of lactic acid for example lactic acid is used in resins as polylactic acid in plastic industry as various other derivatives in electroplating as copper lactate then in baking powder and animal feed supplement that is food related as calcium lactate also as already i have mentioned as a well known preservative also also in leather industry fabric industry a lot of applications are there for lactic acid now the typical media contains 10 to 15 percentage glucose so that is a fermentation medium or any other fermentable sugar now then 10 percentage calcium carbonate to neutralize the lactic acid formed fine then ammonium phosphate is there then trace amount of other nitrogen sources then what all things are there corn beet beet molasses potato starch and whey often used as carbohydrate sources so carbohydrate sources are corn beet beet molasses potato starch and whey now typical process use an incubation temperature of 45 to 50 degree that is the incubation temperature ph 5.5 to 6.5 now agitation is provided proper mixing to suspend calcium carbonate but not aerate so since the process is anaerobic so this fermentation that is the fermentation of lactic acid is anaerobic in nature so that is an example for an anaerobic fermentation and they will give four options so lactic acid fermentation is anaerobic fine now normally completed within 5 to 7 days approximately 90 percentage of sugar is converted into lactic acid in this fermentation clear that is about the production of lactic acid now yes we are almost over for today okay we will we will finish it before the time since we go in a very fast pace now finally after fermentation calcium so once fermentation is over and lactic acid is accumulated in the media what is going to happen calcium carbonate is added to raise ph to 10 fine and the media is heated and filtered so we add calcium carbonate and the ph is raised to 10 and the media the fermentation media is heated and filtered which kills bacteria so we are sterilizing fine and coagulates the protein removes excess calcium carbonate and decomposes residual carbohydrate for all these purposes we heat and filter the fermentation media so by heating and fermentation media bacteria are killed protein is coagulated excess calcium carbonate is removed and residual carbohydrates are decomposed fine now the recovery of lactic acid with high purity is difficult to achieve so it is very difficult for us to recover the product lactic acid with a reasonable purity and the cost of recovery is forced the replacement of lactic acid with alternative chemicals for certain commercial purpose so since since recovery of lactic acid is very costly fine instead of lactic acid industries use very various other chemicals for certain commercial purposes as well clear so that's all about the production of organic acids by microbial fermentation our topic comes to an end here it was a small topic so i hope it is clear for all of you if you have any doubts in any of these uh, slides please let me know otherwise i will we will go to the uh, multiple choice questions any anything you want anything you want me to explain more or any other term or anything from this topic microbial fermentation can you tell submerged culture okay okay
see um the the first one i don't remember now i think it is surface fermentation or subsurface fermentation something like that now in usually most of the fermentations are submerged in nature now submerged means the fermentation process takes place inside the media for example in a in a, in a I, I will explain it in a very convenient way when we grow fungus in a conical flask you know some of the fungal mycelia will be present on the surface of the media you can see whereas in some other cases the the media is mixed with the fungal mycelia submerged culture or submerged fermentation is a technique in which the whole fermentation takes place under the top layer of the media it is submerged within the media inside the media the media is covering the whole process you you don't have any uh, surface reactions all the media and the microorganisms will be present inside the uh, uh, that is all the fermentation reaction will take place within the media that's what submerged fermentation most of the fermentations are submerged in nature whereas you have fermentations like surface fermentation and subsurface fermentation for uh, there are there are examples for that but majority of the fermentation which takes place is submerged in nature fine yeah that's it no we can we can tell like that all the submerged cultures are anaerobic no we can tell like that see it, it all depends upon the uh, it all depends upon the um, i mean nature of microorganism you know how bacteria or fungus how organisms are classified you have aerobes you have anaerobes facultative aerobes facultative uh, obligate aerobes facultative anaerobes micro aerophiles all these are there fine it's all depends upon the um, what uh, it all it all depends upon the nature of the organism now in case if we want to go for anaerobic fermentation what we will do in a fermenter we will avoid aeration we will not uh, use sparger that is forced aeration will be completely avoided and agitation also will be limited because when we are going for agitation also mixing is taking place so that there is a uh, natural mechanism for the oxygen which is present inside the fermenter to dissolve in the media so if we have to go for an anaerobic fermentation two things we will do we will switch off the sparger there won't be any forced aeration oxygen will not be provided in the media and we will limit the agitation that's it it's nothing like all submerged cultures are anaerobic we can't tell that see you think in this way now uh, when we grow bacteria in conical flask even aerobic organism also it will grow we, we, we will get a turbidity right and even anaerobic organism also we will get a turbidity in the liquid media fermentation is nothing but what is happening in the conical flask is happening in a large container that's it that is fermentation what we are doing in a conical flask if we are doing it in a large container with all the environmental conditions we are controlling like aeration agitation all those things that's what fermentation is all about the same mechanism or the same growth pattern that's why we are going for scaling up we start from a uh, small media tube maybe a 10 ml tube or a uh, nutrient enriched land we scale up the inoculum okay we will go for 10 ml we will go for maybe 50 ml then we will go for 500 ml 1 liter 5 liter 10 liter 100 liter 500 liter 1000 liter like that that's what a scaling up of inoculum means whatever mechanism or whatever production is happening in a conical flask we are doing it in a large scale fermenter that's it so when we go for large scale fermenter we have to make sure all the parameters are controlled in such a way that's why we are providing baffles sparger aeration agitation all those things clear whether a fermentation is aerobic or anaerobic it depends only on the nature of the industrially important organism or the uh, like what or what, which organism we are using if it is an aerobic organism okay the uh, fermentation will be aerobic in nature if it is an anaerobic it will be anaerobic in nature that's it yes any other things you want to ask me any other doubts all of you uh, how many were there today four people right Vidushi was there, Shalini was there, then um, Mauniya was there, Anaka. Yes, any more doubts? 
okay we will go for the we will go for the mcq mcq is there we will go for that okay so similarly i'll be asking question one by one now the first question is for anaka fine since anaka told me there is no doubts direct questions only okay first question for anaka msg is the trade name for dash gluconic acid glutamic acid itaconic acid citric acid msg yes i need the answer from anaka msg is the trade name for dash gluconic acid glutamic acid itaconic acid and citric acid So Anakha has given me the answer B, that is gluconic acid. Any other answers? Okay, so that's it, direct question, fine. And the next question is for Maunia. Dash is a derivative of gluconic acid used in the treatment of anemia. Dash is a derivative of gluconic acid used in the treatment of anemia ferrous gluconate calcium gluconate magnesium gluconate ferric gluconate and the question is for maunia yes maunia so for last question i didn't get any answer from anaka vidushi maunia and who is the other one who didn't answer shalini i didn't get an answer from shalini for the previous question is Maunia, you are going for ferrous gluconate. What about Shalini? Shalini, what about the answer for this question? Shalini is also with uh, any any other answers? Yes, all of you are going with the same answer. Okay. And the third question is for Vidushi. Maybe third and the final question. Yes, Vidushi, dash is a derivative of lactic acid used in veterinary field. Now, options are calcium lactate, copper lactate, polylactate, and lactose. Dash is a derivative of lactic acid used in veterinary field. Calcium lactate, copper lactate, polylactate, lactose. Yes, Vidushi, you are again going with the first option. Any other options? Yes. Yes, Anaka, all of you have the same question. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, that's all. That's all about the uh, about the thing. Fine. Now, uh, just before before stopping the thing, let me. Tell you one more thing about the submerged or already I told you what is submerged fermentation. Fine. So submerged fermentation, now you know that is the, all the ingredients of a fermentation process is submerged or it is inside the media completely. The media covers the whole process. Whereas the second type, another type of fermentation, we call it as solid state fermentation. Fine. In solid state fermentation, what is happening? You are having it is not submerged actually. Our uh, growth of microorganisms takes place on the surface, surface of the media. Fine. Maybe microbial, maybe a fungal mycelium is formed on the surface. It is solid state in nature. Fine. It is not like a liquid fermentation where all the ingredients are submerged inside the liquid. So just refer these two types. What are they? Fine. Get some reference for both solid type fermentation and submerged fermentation. Clear? So with this, today's topic comes to an end. Fine, over to the organizers. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. It was really very informative. So, students, if you have any doubt, please comment. Or uh, if you understood today's uh, topic, please comment yes in the comment box. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. So, you can leave the meeting. That's all for today.